Forgot to add myself to the screen. Welcome to the show, everyone. How's it going? I, I never do that. I never do that. Weird. I don't know why it didn't automatically add me. Usually I'm automatically. I think I've removed myself too. From it. Anyways, welcome to the show. I'm trying to be more professional at this point moving forward. Uh, hope you all are doing good on this Thursday. I don't know what day it is half the time. Uh, so much stuff going on. So much fun things in this ecosystem. Are you having fun yet, everyone? Are you not having fun? Tell me if you're not having fun. You know what? Just don't. Maybe just tell me if tell me when exactly you think you'll be having fun because if you're not if you're not just walking around confused and excited in this ecosystem, I don't know. You may not be paying attention, which is probably probably for the best half the time. Anyways, uh, excited to get into the show today. Got a couple of gentlemen back. Uh, I got Stu uh, from Tetra and well, fast a little sort of Tetra two fucks, all that stuff too going on and talking strategies. And this is a project I've I've been looking forward to. Uh, them uh, getting different pieces done and stuff for a while now. If you've been following the channel and uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. So hope you got your coffee. Hope you got your, uh, I got some Earl Grey going on over here. Got your uh, listening devices turned all the way up. If you have them, all that good stuff, because we're going to do a deep dive in some different default automation strategies, uh, covering a few different things, of course, including uh, two fucks. We talk about hex a little bit, pulse X, uh, fucks farming, different stuff on that too. So I get to chat just a minute for, but then let me get these gentlemen in. We'll go for about an hour or so. It's going to be jam-packed stream. Welcome back to the show, Fast Abdul and Stu. How's it going, gents? Hello. You're back. You're both back. Uh, fast, is, fast has been, Fast comes on every once in a while, but Stu, man, it just Stu keeps refusing to come on the show, and I just keep <laughs> needed Fast to talk to him. You, you've, never, you've never actually invited me. That's that's the thing. If you invited me, then I'd, I'd, I'd come along, you know. Neil's, uh, Neil's a regular now, so... Neil's the surrogate for for so many so many different uh, uh, representations of, of different stuff now. So, yeah, I know that it's true. I actually have not invited you. I was, I was actually thinking back, man, when's the last time Stu was on the show? Probably last time I told him to come on for Founders Week. Actually, I think it's literally that Founders was, yeah. Week back in it was October. I want to say, man, I was I was on holiday. Months. I was I was away for the weekend with my wife at the time. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I made yeah, the time right. for you, man. I was on I holiday. <laughs> All I got to do is ask. I, I know now. Now I know. Now I know. Fast Abdul. Always trying to get here as quick as you can to tell people the good word about two fucks around. What's happening, man? Oh, you're on mute. We want to know more. My bad. My bad. It's been a, a pretty uh, busy month, Max. Uh, we're uh, so close to being ready to launch two fucks. Um, it's just like little details. We literally have it done and we're just sort of like finessing the the mobile version and things of that nature. And those little details can take time, uh, which is the frustrating part, but the back end is completely done. Uh, we have audits uh, set up for basically next week and uh, the auditors are uh, not anticipating it taking very long. And um, yeah, we're actually doing live testing on the pulse chain. So rather than a test net, we're running like a private real net. So we know it works like every day it works. Yellow cake is behind the scenes. Like, running real transactions, connecting with the real Fox exchange to, you know, verify that our contracts are correct and that they're working. So that's, uh, you no, know, it feels pretty good, but it's like the closer I get, the more I just want it to be done so we can, you know, just get it out there and uh, start using it like, you know, myself and everybody else like too, of course. So, but so close, we're, we're uh, almost there. Would you say two more weeks close? Is that how close you are? I never say two more weeks close. <laughs> Ask me again in a week. Met Ask me again in a week. Okay. Met yeah, me. I'm not going to ask you, Stu. I'm not going to ask you how close we are Met to Texas taking. I just, <laughs> ain't going to do it. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but yeah, let, let's get into that too. Like, it's, so people who, you know, I, I did, we've, I've had Stu on the show a few times, uh, or at least two or three times. Neil's been on a million times talking about Tetra fast, you know, from time to time as well. But you want to give people an idea of just what, what is Tetra? What are the different products? Uh, what is it meant to do? And then uh, we'll get into like, you know, how two fucks is like, yeah, it can be used for it and, and all that stuff. Sure. Yeah. So Tetra is a, a, a tool to allow you to automate your DeFi. Anything you can manually do on the blockchain, you're going to be able to drag and drop blocks together, connect them up to effectively build anything you can do manually as an automated smart contract that you own on the blockchain. Um, and, and that in its most simplest form is effectively what it is. Um, so yeah, you're going to be able to build DeFi strategies. You're going to be able to just automate mundane tasks, um, stake here, uh, end stake, go and do this, and um, you know build these complicated 
uh, loops that everybody wants for that passive income stream and to be able to uh, sort of generate yield in, in various different places. And we plan to um, make these tools available for anybody without ever having to write a single line of code and democratize the, the whole thing um, and, and just make it available for everybody. So yeah, Tetra is a, in its Stratus, which is one of the products, is uh, the, the drag and drop tool to allow you to automate your DeFi. Um, what we're rolling out at the minute is the Omnis protocol, which is a DEX aggregator. It's limit orders, it's compound limit orders, it's um, automatically manage your liquidity. What we've, what we've been doing over the last few months since, um, which I think is, in fact, I don't know when did this happen, when the Rubik stuff happened with OKX. I think it was after a, a, a last stream, do you? Um, yeah, I think it was around October. Yeah, October, it was. Yeah. So ultimately, we were going to be using the Rubik SDK. And the weekend that we planned to launch Stratus, which was all programmed and hooked up, ready to go with the, the Rubik SDK, um, OKX uh, decided to rug their liquidity. <laughs> Too much so uh, like... shop topics, dude. Nobody knows what, uh, what uh, SDK is. Oh, right. Okay. Sorry. Beg your pardon. <laughs> so uh, anyway, the, the connectors that, that we were using. For devs. Yeah, yeah. The stuff we connected into with Rubik um, still worked, but because there was no liquidity, it never worked. So we had to kind of re-evaluate the situation at that time and say, well, rather than using Rubik or rather than using any other third party, why don't we just go and launch these smart contracts ourselves? And as we were doing that, it was like, well, actually, we could put a swap front end on this. We can give people limit orders now, which is useful. Uh, for PulseX, for Fox, you can go and do that right now. Set limit orders on Omnis um, and uh, the liquidity management. So they're the three key pieces of infrastructure that we need in place to make Stratus available. And we already have limit orders. The compound limit orders coming out as soon as possible. I'm, I'm not saying dates. I'm deliberately avoiding dates for, for various different reasons, but we're I mean, that's done. It's pretty much went through the beta test now. So we're going to get that out. Then we get stake in. Then we are ready to put Stratus, which is the the, the automation tools out to the public for uh, for, for playing around with and, and, and testing. But ultimately, what's important to remember is, is that these contracts that are um, already running on the blockchain right now are ultimately what Tetra will, or Stratus will use to, to automate all of this kind of stuff, you know? So um unlimited end uh, you know it's like unlimited use case if you can imagine it you can go and build it using stratus where our tools and you know we're we're in the process of just finalizing the the railroads that's going to allow the steam train to just push through everything so it's exciting i like steam trains i like up and to the right steam trains that follow that kind of path Towards the moon, yeah. perhaps, even. That'd be nice. The good yeah. thing about steam trains is, is that you don't need to rely on anybody. You can just go chop down a tree and it st still keeps going, you know? It's immutable it's like like travel. Steve analogy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Immutable travel. Yeah. Immutable travel. Actually, <laughs> I don't know where we're going. But I like I that, yeah. I don't know where we're going either, yeah. <laughs> of course, I'm kidding, yeah. yeah. Uh, compound limit orders. What is a compound limit order versus... Uh, not compound limit order. So, so a standard limit order is 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 what it is. If you know what a limit order is, you set a price, and the uh, the contract will then go and market buy at the price when that price is reached. Compound limit order is something just a a little bit more complicated than that, but really useful. So, think of you can you can use it like as a, as a, to execute a swing trade, for example. So, um. If you wanted to buy an asset at this price or at this ratio, and then when the ratio changes to something else that you like, then uh, it's not on. It's yeah, Max. It's not on the uh, the main uh, page at the minute. It's it's just running in the background. Oh, yeah, just anyway, limit order yeah, the, 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 the sorry, beg your pardon. So the compound limit order is effectively it allows you to automate a swing trade, um, and you can. Set the ratio for between trade one to asset two, and then a trade between asset two to then asset three. Now, asset three could be the same as asset one. So, say you wanted to do a swing trade between Pulse to Pulse X 
and then from pulse back to pulse X back to pulse. When those ratios change, and they do on a regular basis, not in a big, big way because of the bonded liquidity, but when they do change, you can take advantage of uh, differences in those ratios to actually increase your pulse position just by trading those ratios without having to do anything other than just setting it up in the first place. So a compound limit order is, and you can use it to get into a third asset. So you could go from pulse to incentive because you think incentive is going to go, you know, there's a good ratio between pulse and incentive. I want to get some incentive at that ratio. And then I want to cash it out into USDC or DAI or whatever. I think uh, you're frozen there, Stu. He can't hear you when he's frozen. He's in the metaverse. Oh, dear. It is a pretty though. cool he's, idea, though. So He's like, yeah. oh, there it's back. Yeah. yeah, I was just showing people uh, on this for the for limit orders. And then, yeah, when it, whenever compound limit orders are out, I imagine the payment will be added and you'll be able to, you know, do the different different ones here. Yes, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And just to give people an idea, this is a screenshot on Tetra.win uh, as far as what the, is anything, like, do you think, uh, you know, when uh, Atlas launches this, does anything major change? Is it still kind of like the same same deal here? The dash, yeah, the dashboard is much the same. The the menu on the left-hand side has, has got a lot more on it now uh, because obviously we've got a lot of new things that are available with, with Omnis, which will always stand as a, as a standalone product. But we have a lot of things like, um, so we've just actually migrated our new data feed system, which is effectively taking all the uh, prices across all of the different DEXs and all the different pools where super optimized um, multi-hop, um, you know, um, uh, swap um, thingamajig. We, we do have, have a name for it, but I can't remember what we I ended up calling it. We'll, we'll publish that at some point. But basically, this is a script file that runs in the background to get you the most optimized price on Pulse Chain. Now, because we've went away and developed uh, what is ultimately a subgraph that incorporates every single DEX on uh, uh, the Pulse Chain, we're going to be able to do a lot with that information when it comes to Atlas. Um, so one of those things, um, which is, uh, this, is a, this is a new bit of information, I guess, is, is that we now have a license in place for trading view to bring trading view charts to pulse chain and we're going to be using all our subgraph information to provide those trading view charts directly inside atlas so we're wow. we're building the infrastructure in the background these are but these are these are not part of the critical path these are nice to have things that the community want but having having that information available to us allows us to do a large uh, you know a huge number of things with that information and that's just one of them so it's it's going to be exciting. So yes, it's it's evolving, and even after it's released, it will continue to evolve. Nice. Very cool, the trading view yeah. thing's a big deal, right? Like I'm not a charting guy, but isn't that like kind of the thing that we that we need is to have trading view be on Pulse Chain? Well, that's what the community keep telling me. I'm quite happy with Dex Screener, to be quite honest. You know, yeah. um, I don't I don't really trade much, but I know a lot of people do. And um, I think there's a lot of features in there. Ultimately, ultimately, we um, have the license in place. We just need to plug the data into it and make it available in our front end. That's actually really very straightforward. So, um, again, because of the, the because of the uh, infrastructure that we've built, it's like all of these things are are really actually easy and quite clear for us to be able to provide. So, you know, and then of course, trading trading view might uh, themselves support pulse chain in the future too. And that's fine. That'd be amazing if they did. And and I think one of the things bringing it to Pulse Chain is, is you can use indicators and stuff there. Is that the biggest advantage over Dex Screener currently? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. So that's where we're at. Yeah. Um, so ne next kind of big update is is that we have the, obviously the compound limit orders are going to get pushed out. The liquidity management um, contracts are pretty much complete um we just need to build the front end and we're going to be speaking to a few people in the community about that to to kind of do that in parallel but once the liquidity management elements are done which is effectively going to allow you to rebalance your liquidity on any exchange that we support or decentralized exchange that we support um rebalance your liquidity take profits 
uh, go and throw it into a strategy, do whatever you want. Um, that that liquidity management feature is going to be quite important. Once we've been through the once we've been through the mill with that, then we effectively take Omnis out of beta, and we've got all of the decentralized smart contracts that exist that allow us to take Stratus uh, to the beta phase and, and allow people to start to build these automations. So um, it's um, yeah, we're very close and staking soon. I think the coolest thing, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of different parts here. Omnis, of course, is a platform, the staking portion for, for token holders and stuff. And then, of course, the DeFi automation, the strategies, the the pieces that are super interesting, um, super interesting project. When it all comes together, it's like you'll, you'll, you'll actually be able to take different protocols and then users who want to interact with one versus another in different ways can. And what you know, Fast is going to show us to in a little bit in a, in a minute with diagrams and stuff talk to different protocols, do, you know, more efficient trading or do more efficient farming or, or, you know, just t save your time, take your time back and not have to do everything manually. And just, again, just have, the idea is like put your money in and then let it, you know, in a trustless way and then let the the robots manage all this stuff for you. It's already been proven with different strategies and stuff. That's, that's the cool yeah. thing about it. Very excited for it. Yep. In uh, 2024, we certainly hope so. <laughs> Hang in there. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Fast, uh, you want to take us through maybe an example? I know you got uh, a few diagrams and stuff too, especially with, with TuFux and, and introduce TuFux as well and, and how that, you know, how that protocol works. Okay. Yeah. I'll do, you know, we're not going to really fo super focus on TuFux today, but uh, we can touch on that like TuFux is a fork of Convex and Aura from Ethereum. Uh, they're built um, on top of like the balancer exchange, which is huge. Um and then Fux is a fork of Balancer V2 that's on Pulse Chain, that's PHUX Exchange. And uh, so we're building on top of that with our own fork of Aura. And um, what it, our main focus is in two areas. One is giving people superior yield, and it's basically up to a 2.5x boost, like 2.5 times more yield than you might be able to get by yourself. Um, and then on top of that, we're giving people more voting power. Now, voting power is super important because in the Fux ecosystem, similar to Balancer, um, you're only voting for one thing, which is which pool, uh, like liquidity pool, uh, gets the most yield, which is incentivized with the PHUX token. So our protocol is going to control a large amount of votes. And that is going to enable people to direct those votes if they hold our native token. That will be the, the two Fox token. And uh, it'll likely be more than any individual will wield by themselves. And it might start out smaller, but very quickly it'll snowball. The nature of the protocol is it builds. It builds more uh, what's called prime Fox being permanently locked inside the contract. It turns into something called prime two Fox, which is kind of like a liquid wrapped staking token, kind of like rock pool or something so that you can um, have your, uh, Prime Fox uh, for yield, but it's not locked for a year like it would be in the Fox contract. But people will come to us when we launch, which hopefully is going to be very soon. They'll be able to, with two clicks, they'll be able to unstake their LP tokens on the Fox exchange and then restake them through the two Fox front end. And of course, they're still staked inside uh, the Fox exchange just via our front end, which will enable them to use our large pool of prime fucks that's permanently locked in our protocol to give them that 2.5x boost. So more yield, more votes, and votes are worth money. And uh, to the point where we're building a secondary protocol that'll come out about a month after. We've actually mostly built it, but um, we need you know two fucks to be there called Bribery that will allow people to sell those votes for bribes that can be paid by in various tokens uh, that likely whales and founders and people like that who are very incentivized uh, to have votes go to a particular pool, we'll put up these bribes in the form of bids uh, and people will be able to choose whether to accept that bribe or to accept that bribe lower down that is for the pool that they're most interested in. And uh, just for example, like if it was for a Tetra pool, uh, the person putting up the bribe would have the option to actually pay in the Tetra token. They could pay a different token. They could pay Pulse or, you know, a number of acceptable high quality tokens. But something like Tetra, they would, could actually pay with that token. So, you know, if somebody's a Tetra Maxi, there could be some good options there, which is kind of what the strategy I want to show you today is sort of about. Yeah, it, it's interesting. When I, when I think of two fucks too, I just think of, you know, the different products that take, you know, uh, enable 
not enable people to come together and do pulled types of things. And this is one, like, you, I guess the ideal too, is people are kind of priced out of getting a lot of yield from, from fucks, unless you are, yeah. you know, a whale or, or a shark or other, otherwise and two fucks yep. is being like, okay, well, there's another protocol we can build on top of and, you know, to take, uh, you know, make you get some, 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 some sort of better percentage than you would just like a hex stake, right? Like, you know, a longer pays better, bigger pays better kind of like that. So hex exactly. and you got to like maximum stuff too. Like that's, that's at least this way I think about it when I relate it different yep. still, uh, staked pulled staking products on pulse chain with popular protocols. That's sort of thing. Yep. And it, it does fit into that pooled staking products niche, right? Because the little guys basically like, yeah, there are, there's guys with, you know, whatever, $200,000 worth of staked Fox that they don't mind locking for a year. Um, but like most people are never going to have that. And so they won't have that boost option. So, but when they come to two fucks, basically they're staking like they were that whale. And it doesn't matter whether they're staking $50 worth of LP tokens or $10,000 worth of LP tokens, like it's going to be an advantage. So very few people won't benefit from it. And then there's like, you know, there's going to be additional things as well, because we have our own community tokens that are part of the process you know it's it's kind of complicated but the bottom line is that 2.5x yield boost and the ability to not have to lock for a year to get the boost is huge and people will enjoy that forgot about the locking period too uh, that's an interesting yeah. point yeah one year uh, lock to get the max boost you don't have to lock for a year but it's almost not worth it unless you lock for a year Neil's so with comment two fucks, you don't Neil's got a comment that's going to turn into a question too. Are there, yeah, what, what do you have to do to get your protocol to be accepted as a bribe? As a bribe? Okay. Well, that that's an interesting question. So first off, and I want to make this disclaimer. I always do this on every stream. The two Fox team is completely separate from the Fox team, right? So like Dylan and Buck, uh, they're not working directly with Yellowcake and I. We interact to make sure the protocols will work safely together for the sake of the users. But, you know, it is separate teams. So as far as uh, getting what they call a gauge, which means your pool is incentivized, it gets extra income in the form of the Fox token. That's completely up to the, the Fox team from the ph ecosystem two fox doesn't control that but if you do have a gauge pool you're then going to be eligible uh to get that boost if when your users come and stake through the two fox front end um as well that is basically the criteria for being able to put up a bribe so any user could in theory put up a bribe for a particular pool you don't have to be a founder uh, you don't have to be a giant whale. And it's going to come down to math to some extent. I'm sure I'll be able to come up with some calculators fairly shortly for that, where, you know, if you, you, know, if you have $5,000 in a particular LP pool and you can increase the votes to that pool by 1%, there, there's going to be a, like an immediate result as soon as those votes flip over, which is, you know, basically every seven days on the cycle. Uh, where you're everyone, not just you, everyone who interacts with that pool is going to get more yield which of course is an incentive for people to hold the token and even buy the token. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a serious result to that. So even a smaller user could put up a smaller bribe for a pool where nobody else had put up a bribe and, and that would be okay. Somebody might choose to take it, even if it was very small, right? If it's something rather than nothing, uh, you might end up getting, you know, somebody that votes for your pool just because they see it on the bribery page. Uh, it'll be bribery.io and, um, you know, it'll just have a list of all the bribes. So any user will be able to put up a bribe. And uh, it's, you know, basically uh, like contract bribes, right? So like they put up the bid, the money is safe. Uh, there's a, like a certain amount and it goes to a certain number of users who get in first and accept the bribe for the number of votes that they have to offer. So yeah, Neil, you can, you can get in there and you can put up bribes for uh, anything that has a gauge pool on fucks and thus is stakeable via two hmm. fucks yeah it'll be interesting to see the, the the you know the teams or the communities and stuff that engage with it. it seems like it's almost built to be like there's this push factor to engage you know assuming people figure out a way to profit and stuff from it it's almost like that kind of thing too which is a little unique yeah and it's not like a completely new idea like this stuff is happening on ethereum we're actually forking like an existing protocol uh, called Hidden Hand from Ethereum, and making you know some changes for the Pulse Chain because the Pulse Chain has some different parts. But um, like people make between three to five percent of their bag a month on Ethereum, uh, sometimes more, sometimes up to ten percent. It would like when there's some sort of event going on, uh, selling um, their votes for bribes. So like think of that at the top of the bull market. What kind of numbers you'll be looking at? Like it's 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 a very substantial thing. And initially, like the first 
week or month, uh, you know, probably some people are going to be sleeping on it. And some particular founders might be able to get a really good deal on, you know, buying up some votes to incentivize a pool. But over a relatively short period of time, it's just going to become a commodity. Like there'll be there'll be more or less like a value of bribes uh, and people will, you know, like go plus or minus 10, 20 percent on that unless there's a specific incentive or a specific founder that really wants to push a special pool. So that's uh, that's there. It's it's an option. It's not something the users are forced to take. Right. Like they can always just direct their own votes. And of course, with the, the the bribe system, they don't have to take the top bribe. Like if somebody's offering a dollar and somebody else is offering 50 cents, you can take the 50 cents if it's for a pool you would have voted for anyway, because they get to see where that vote is going, right? It's not just, it's not just um, you know, like a blind vote, oh, here, take my money. You don't know what happens to your vote. No, it's like, this is the good kind of bribes. This is like, like smart contract monitored uh, bribes where you get to know where your vote is going and you can still take the money. So in that respect, you can very much, you know, have your cake and eat it too. If I would have voted for, you know, whatever pool and like, let's say there was a Tetra pool on the, on the Fox exchange that was incentivized. If that's where I wanted to vote anyway, and then there was a bribe up in Tetra tokens to vote there, then why would I not just take that? Right. And if I wasn't sure where to vote and then I saw that and I was like, Oh, I like Tetra tokens. So those are okay. Maybe I take that too. So there's, there's sort of incentives for everybody to watch that. Uh, whether you're, you know, going to vote a certain way or not, it's it'll be important, and will uh, very quickly just become another commodity on the pulse chain. Well, I'm glad you didn't name it Brideberry. You know, I feel like that's probably a phone for newlyweds or something. Uh, <laughs> but uh, bri bride, bri bribe, yeah, not, bride, bribe, get mixed bride, up. Bride, yeah. Brideberry, Brideberry, very Brideberry. Cool. Yeah. Well, what do you uh, what do you want to show us about uh, how that works with like how can people use it with Tetra? And we'll go through a few different protocols. But yeah, definitely the two fucks. How how can that be automated? You bet. Well, maybe I have a uh, something to present here. Let me just pull it up if I can figure out the technicals and we can look at the strategy that I made. Uh, full disclaimer, uh, Stu has not seen the strategy. Uh, it is nope. completely of my own design and it's uh, based on no official announcements whatsoever. Just things that I think could happen. And if they did happen, this is how I might I might play with it, but not financial advice, just ideas. OK, awesome. Okay, present. Sorry, minor technical difficulties. One moment. No worries. Take this opportunity to show everyone my new ink ink shirt. My first mm -hmm. one. I made it. I made a shirt. I made a Pulsex shirt that has an ink logo on the back. This is the first one with the main thing is ink. Yield farming, baby, right here. Not the only yield farming token, but Inconites. Inconites unite, and uh, <laughs> it's, it's been an honorary blue chip, I guess. And uh, we'll see. We'll see if the thing goes back to eighty bucks. We'll see. Okay, just one sec, guys. Be right with you. Just got to turn it on. All right. I like fast as a uh, layer. I said uh, he's got like the mezzanine seating at the control center. Of, uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. It's like a spaceship. Yeah. Two Fox headquarters, yeah. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. You don't know the power of the dark side. Yeah, like, Max, I am your father. No, that's Richard. No, no, never mind. <laughs> I love it. Love it, man. Wow. That's a oh, that was fun. Anyway, you get where I'm going here. That's a two-piece deal. Wow. So am I sharing the screen? I, I wanted to wait until oh, we got we got through that. You got the now you got the backwards helmet on, man. Is that Louis Vuitton? Yeah. Okay. okay. It looks good. That so I have here the uh Darth Stu future Tetris strategy. Let's just get the zoom. So this is just like this is a relatively simple strategy. I know Tetra could do a lot more things than this, but this sort of just illustrates one way where you could be a maxi on a particular token, uh, automate it with Tetra, and then use two fucks to amplify your yield, assuming that there was a gauged or incentivized uh, pool on the fucks exchange. 
So general concept, I just, I got them numbered here. So we'll just go through them and uh, stop me if you want me to clarify anything. Cause I know it's uh, you know, fairly heavy stuff. So the main concept here is you create a balance in your bags by staking. Half I just realized, time. I've actually just realized that it's my face. It's on Darth Vader. Oh yes, of course. Yes. <laughs> it is the Darth Stu feature. Petrus I was trying to read the, right. Okay. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> I genuinely have not seen this and I would never have awesome. approved either. <laughs> That's why I didn't show you. Asking, no. asking forgiveness is easier than uh, asking permission, right? There we go. <laughs> so um, we're going to create a balance in our bags by staking half of our Tetra in the Tetra protocol and then half of it in an in incentivized Tetra LP pool on Fox, assuming that there was one in the future, right? So the thing I like about that concept, and I, I believe, and stop me if I'm wrong, Stu, but I think this works with the Tetra token and it works with some other tokens too. Where if half the people are staked in something like two fucks in an LP pair and half are staked in the Tetra protocol, likely both halves are receiving superior yield than if they were all diluting each other in one spot. Is that is that Correct. yes? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, for 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 the record, we will be setting up a pool, a significant pool on Fox at some point nice. on the fu in the future, and um, I'm sure it will get a gauged pool. Um, and um you know we, we have some ways to be able to incentivize that pool as well which I, I won't talk about but yes is the answer and ultimately the yield um uh, then becomes or do i want to stake to get fees if it's going to be really busy then you can it then becomes like a a sort of where do i want to be with the tetra because they want to be providing liquidity or they want to stake or yeah so exactly. yeah okay right yeah can't and that'll, you know, it's going to come down to mass sometimes, but I think, uh, you know, people can take a balanced approach like this to balance their bags. And then, which brings us to the option number two, right? And we'll come back to this because it kind of connects to all the other options or, uh, you know, uh, part number two is you restore balance by reinvesting your yield, right? Which in this case is going to be uh, via stables you get from staking the Tetra token uh, in the Tetra protocol from Fox tokens. Prime two and prime two fucks tokens that you get from the two fucks protocol by using their front end to stake stake your fucks LP, and then you can reinvest those back into either Tetra tokens to stake inside the protocol or uh, Tetra LP on the fucks exchange to stake via the two fucks front end, and that decision could be made based on which was paying more on that day. Right. Because mm -hmm. I think there'll be like a balance where, you know, one week, one might be paying more another week. The other might be paying more. It'll depend on votes. It'll depend on bribes. Um, and it's going to and depend on the number of users uh, by volume that are in each pool, respectively. So yep. by changing and possibly automating that with Tetra to, you know, have it decide where to go based on which pool is paying more that week or that day. Um, mm -hmm. that's going to be something that, you know, you can auto compound at a much faster rate, uh, than if you just went into one or the other and everybody who's participating, these are, are helping each other out by continuously not diluting one particular pool. Right. Yeah. So I, I, th I really do think it's going to, it's going to bounce back and forth. Right. And there might be whole weeks or whole months where one or the other is paying more. But I, I don't think it'll be consistently one or the other. And so this sort of strategy is, you know, going to be something where people can, uh, you know, just diversify their bags partly. That, that's part of the game. And just actually have a better uh, compounding strategy because they're, you know, just taking the like reinvesting in the best thing on the day, even though they're all kind of connected in some ways. Absolutely. So, I mean, any, anything you can use to generate more yield to get more of the stuff that you want, whether it's Tetra or whether it's something else. This is actually, uh, so far, because uh, we'll get to the rest there, obviously, but so far, even just doing that is good if you just want to accumulate more of exactly. something that you want, right? Yep. So, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, and that alone is a strategy, right? Like, you don't have to have a 10-step strategy, and we can certainly, this strategy only has five steps the way I've created. You could loop so many things into this. You could have things going on on, you know, you could have LP on 9 millimeter with, with Tetra. You could have LP on... Um, Paul Sex with Tetra, there's, there's many different games that you can loop into the strategy. But for now, with what we've put here, I think it's enough for people to understand. So step number three, I have um, that you would stake your Fox Tetra Pool LP token uh, via the 2Fox.io front end to get that up to 2.5x boosted yield. 
And that yield is paid to you in the Fox token, the same token you would have received uh, if you'd done it on the Fox exchange, but probably a greater amount because at two Fox, we give more Fox. And also you'll get the two Fox token. So with this scenario I've created here, the Fox token is going back into um, pay you more uh, back into get to get compounded. But the two Fox token, you can lock it in our ecosystem. And there's a very important reason you want to do that. So it doesn't have to be that way. You could be doing things with uh, the Fox token. You can convert it into Prime. Two Fox is many discussions on all these tokens have utility, right? Which is the great thing. But, you know, it's okay to take yield sometimes. And if you have an option like compounding like this, you know, picking one token for yield and one token for compounding and one token to stake for further further gains, I think is a is a good compromise. It's balance, right? And that's a lot of people don't have that when how they approach their bags. I think Tetris is really going to help people get that because it won't be an emotional decision. You'll take a strategy right. from somebody like me or somebody smarter than me, like you know, like uh, Crypto Sloth or Red Squirrel, that's going to have something more complicated. And then you can make a reasonable decision when you're calm, press the button and walk away. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the next step I have, you know, so we're, we're, so we're staking our LP token. We're getting yield in fucks and the two fucks token. The two fucks token has utility in the two fucks ecosystem. You can lock it. That's what it's called inside the protocol. And when you lock it, um, which is for 16 weeks during that time, you get yield in our prime two fucks token. That's the, the liquid wrapped uh, prime fucks, basically, uh, which you can stake. But in this scenario, also have that being sold so that you can continue to compound the strategy. But you also get the voting power. And the voting power you get is based on the amount of prime fucks that is locked in the two fucks contract, which will be substantial and builds continuously. Like basically every user that participates in our protocol uh, increases the amount of prime Fox that gets locked in the ecosystem forever. It can never not be locked. It's always there. Um, and that increases the the voting power of the ecosystem. So it, and, and also the boost power, you know, to get that 2.5 boost or as close as we can for as many people as possible. So with that in mind, um, when you lock your two Fox tokens, whatever amount of prime Fox, which is where the votes come from on the Fox exchange, that two Fox has, you'll get a proportionate amount of that according to the total volume of two Fox tokens that you have locked. And if uh, other people don't lock them, if they're just sitting loose in their wallet or they're an LP pair, that doesn't actually count towards the number, right? So you end up with uh, maybe an improportionate amount of, of, of votes on top of that if half the people are participating in LP, which will likely be incentivized. So I bet you a lot of them are. Or if a lot of people are just, you know, if somebody's trading tokens and they're not going to lock them, uh, you'll get even more votes. So the people who do take that option, I think they'll be very pleased. And because uh, we understand what people want, we're building the bribery system. So there is yield for staking the two fucks token, but there is the uh, bribe option for your votes. So yep. uh, before I proceed to that, any questions about where we're at so far? No, very clear. Yeah, very okay. good. Uh huh. Very good. So. Final step in this strategy is to turn to the dark side and accept bribes. Now, in this case, I'd like to accept my bribes and Tetra tokens. So if someone from the Tetra token uh, community who was concerned uh, wanted to incentivize the Tetra pool, they could put up Tetra tokens in the amount they chose. Uh, and it's like per vote kind of thing. They get to pick the ratio and so on and so forth. And if uh, there's an option like that and a person's like a Tetra maxi and they want to vote for the Tetra pool and they're going to vote there anyway, certainly that's a win. Um, so I think a lot of people in the community would do that. And a lot of people who weren't in the community might become members of the community because they would choose to take that bribe in Tetra tokens. And then the uh, Darth to uh, future Tetra strategy would also benefit them. So then there's the compounding again. So they, they end up with those extra Tetra mm -hmm. tokens and they can just loop that right back into the system. Exactly. So we have like yeah. one, two, three four ways that you're compounding the strategy with yield uh, from interacting with two different protocols. And you're, you're also increasing your LP position, right? So you end up with more, right? Of uh, the, uh, of either the stake Tetra, depending on what the deal is that week, 
or the stake Tetra LP. And then you're ending up with two Fox tokens that you're keeping because you're locking them for the votes in this scenario. So like, yeah, you're selling some stuff, but you're, you're, you're definitely going to get more every month of the, of course. Yeah. But that, but that's what, that's what builds, that's what, that's what builds the whole thing up in the first place. Right. But then it's kind of like, what's really interesting is, is that would, um, if the yield is paying great and Tetra and it's not, it's not paying so good in the in the incentivized pool, mm -hmm. then obviously everybody then rushes to the Tetra staking protocol and vice versa. So it's really good because it provides that kind of level of I like this. It's it's it, it, it distribution actually. And mm -hmm. um um obviously when you when you provide liquidity you risk that in permanent loss but then you can also use Tetra to manage that as well which is exactly yeah and there's yeah, um interesting there's there could be options with Tetra that would go beyond what a normal person would likely uh, manage themselves. Like, mm -hmm. uh, just for example, like with this particular strategy, the only thing that has a time lock in any way whatsoever is the uh, the two fox token that has the 16 week lock to get the yield and the voting. Apart from that, your LP position is not locked. Uh, your staked uh, Tetra tokens through the Tetra protocol aren't locked. Um, so, and any of your yield tokens you receive are, are liquid, uh, like you could decide to do what you want with them. So it's, um, it's going to give you an option to like, um, actually make changes, uh, mid strategy, mid week, uh, you know, just depending on what's happening in the day. And of course, like the, uh, two fucks and the fucks exchange, they're paying out basically every block, uh, they're, they're paying out, uh, in, in fucks and two fucks tokens, et cetera. So you're you're gonna have a very dynamic yield situation, but if you yeah. want to, if if the if the strategy that you devised indicated that you should rebalance and remove some LP um, and move it into Tetra staking, um, well, like there's nothing really preventing you from doing that, right? As long as the technology Absolutely. is there, you can press the unstake button, you can unravel that LP. You'll end up if it was, for example, like 80% uh, Tetra, 20% Pulse. Uh, LP pair, which is the kind of thing that we see often for community tokens on the Fox exchange, then something like that um, would be perfect, right? You'd be like, okay, you get 80% of your 80% uh, Tetra and 20% Pulse drops in your wallet, and then you stake the Tetra back into this. Mm -hmm. Maybe the Pulse goes to buy more Tetra, which also gets staked. Like that could all be automated, and it wouldn't be the most complicated thing that uh, yes, Tetra yes. Stratus could do, right? It's, it's it's actually very straightforward, but it's 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 effective as well. Yeah, no, I really like it. It's uh, it's good, mate. Yeah, and and I genuinely have not seen this. And, I, and like I said, if I'd seen it, I would I would never allow that. So, <laughs> quick quick uh, quick question too, just for people watching. So the difference in in you know using two fucks without using an uh, automation strategy. You just walk through that real quick. Like what what would users have to do to kind of create this on their own versus using Tetra to automate it? Sure, you bet. Now, this one being relatively simple, not necessarily that many button presses. So let's let's sort of count button presses here. So you're gonna stake your Tetra tokens partly through uh, the Tetra front end. So that's that's one button press. Okay. Then you're gonna get Tetra LP, meaning you have to pair up with Pulse, which we'll assume you have it in your wallet, and you're gonna create an LP token. That's two. Um, you know, maybe some authorizations and stuff, but that's that the basics of it. Then you're going to stake that uh, through the two fucks front end, um, which and which is just instead of staking it through the fucks front end. So it's not really an extra button. So that's three in total. Um, then you're locking your two fucks uh, that you receive as yield uh, for. You're delegating uh, to get uh, to get the bribes five, you know, and then you're reinvesting over here, which you know you you might be doing each of these individually, right? So it'd be like one, two, three. So there might only be um, as little as sort of eight to 10 button presses in this scenario. But the, the important thing is is timing and having limits set for certain things at certain times and being yep. there on the right day to do it. Um, like every Wednesday, like today, they just changed. I haven't done the update yet, but I, I go through every Wednesday and find out what are the rates on the fox pools? Because on Wednesday is when the vote goes through. And when the vote goes through, all the rates for what APRs they're paying change, right? So like you you'd have to be to know that, oh, I should switch this to this. You you'd have to be looking. Whereas this could do it for you, right? And make that yeah. switch over to here and then monitor which, you know, which what's paying better, the Tetra staking, 
uh, direct through the protocol or the staking uh, direct uh, of LP through through two fucks. So it's not that this strategy is so complicated that you're pressing a hundred buttons. Like you're not running this in 10 different wallets. There's no, that's one of the really nice things with two fucks. There's no incentive to split up your wallets in some weird Zen like fashion. So you could have, you know, multiple staking there. There's zero incentive for that. You're, you're more incentivized to just have everything together and do it together. Um, and in, in this way, it's going to come down to timing that something like Tetra will be able to automate for you and uh, and not being stressed about it, right? But certainly, you could take this as step one in a much larger strategy and then have, you know, like add complexity in a reasonable way by attaching a completely separate strategy that maybe you funnel, you know, 10% of your profit to. Like just for example, like we have these three tokens here that we're taking yield in. You're not actually getting yield in the Tetra token, Um at this time, except for if, uh, with the, uh, with the bribes that maybe would be paired in Tetra tokens, but like you'd have a stable coin coming from taking Tetra, you'd have Fox tokens and you have prime two Fox tokens. Maybe one of those three, either the stable, uh, Fox or prime two Fox, maybe you sell that and it goes into a lottery, uh, so me style lottery bag that, you know, buys, uh, the new meme coin once a week, right? Like, you know, there's so many things that you could automate with this that would be, um, you know, make it, more complicated but still very comprehensible because once you set this basic strategy you could build on top of it um and not have to press everybody and not have to remember that okay at 5 p.m eastern standard time on wednesdays i have to check to see what the votes are right like all that kind of stuff is gonna like it's gonna add up so quickly compounding you know the seventh wonder of the world i believe uh was what i think einstein said um you know like to have that compounding be automatic and have it be done at a rate that would be tiresome to a human because you're yep. getting paid every like every couple minutes on like on on these some of these platforms right like fox is paying out like continuously what is it on uh will it be on tetris too like how often would a person be able to collect anytime they want they could they could set up when they wanted it to happen at whatever point and whatever was going to trigger that i mean you're talking yep. about compound and how, how many protocols are out there that build Kind of these convoluted things that people need to do to go and click buttons. Totally. If you really like a project and you really want to get more of it, you make an investment. You know, you can sometimes go to like I think. I mean, memory might serve me right here or not. Um, but when Pulse X was on testnet at one point, in one version of those test nets, you could single sidedly stake your Pulse X. Mm -hmm. And you could take your yield and you could re go and recompound it, but you had to go and click a button. Who wants to go and click buttons? If you can come up with ideas that work with true DeFi protocols that generate real yield, why why need to click buttons? You know? Exactly. So, yeah. And with buttons the pulse suck. chain, like everything's so cheap, right? Like, so like on Ethereum, it would be a big deal, right? And like, you know, maybe Tetris yeah. is going to be on Ethereum sometime and you'd have a different strategy for Ethereum. But on Pulse Chain, you could auto compound every you could set every five dollars every ten dollars though there'll be a spot where it makes sense and it might be really low like if fees are low and you can compound for 10 cents it might make sense to compound on two dollars right so yeah. like but like the the monotony of doing that like like if it was me like and I, you know i do this kind of stuff now more or less but like i'm like waiting for like a hundred bucks I, I don't really want to press the buttons too much if it's less than a hundred bucks yeah. right but when there you take out the human error and you just have something that's watching for cheap gas fees and ha something that's watching for, you know, like, you know, for my, the, the yield to get up to $7 or, you know, whatever the magic number yeah. happens to be. And it will do it for you. Like compounding that $7 every like, you know, 37.5 minutes, like that's going to add up really fast versus yeah. compounding a hundred dollars yeah. once a week, you know, just for example, those aren't real numbers, but like, you get the idea. Those small amounts turn into big amounts, and when you're you're making money on top of money continuously, like man, like that that stuff's gonna ramp up really fast. Yeah. It'll be hard to figure out, but if we can get some APR calculators for that sort of like continuous by the minute or by the hour compounding, like wow, it's gonna really gonna ramp up fast. Yeah, mm -hmm. I do get annoyed every time I want to switch farms. Like, oh my god, I gotta click like five buttons. Like this exactly. is it's ridiculous. Yeah. I just want to click one button and just let it go. You know, but I mean, speaking yeah. of that, that's a great segue too. Got like fifteen minutes left. 
Uh, you know, I just want to hit on uh, some, some farming and maybe uh, maybe talk about hex strategy real quick as well. But I know you may have some diagrams on farming. Or, yeah, you bet. Yeah. I don't uh, I don't have a diagram specifically for that. But what I can do is I think if we look at some of the farms on um, on Pulse X, because that's you know that's one of the good places to look, and then we look at some of the farms on um, on um, on Fox and we compare the options and then we, we can look at what's there. And I actually have uh, like, I have a third option that I'd like to pull up too. There, there's something uh, called the farming wizard that the Hocus Pocus guys have put out. And it actually gives you an overview of every farm on the pulse chain uh, that has um, basically, uh, it's a, that's a fork of the sushi swap, uh, sushi swap uh, master chef contract, including, um, nine inch uh, for example so there, there's there's some good options out there but there's also some options i i would be concerned about so our safe options i think are you know nine inch um pulse x obviously uh and fucks that that's where i would do most of my staking less on things that i, that I hadn't heard of at this time so let's take a look first at uh pulse x does that make sense yeah yeah so go from there okay so here we go We have her up there. We do okay. So um, on Pulse X, we have a number of different farms. But the the thing I want people to understand is the impermanent loss ratio on some of these is huge, and it, that's a very serious concern, especially at this point in you know what I believe to be the bull market. So at the top, we have what is probably our safest pair that's going to have the least impermanent loss, meaning that these things are going to move up and down together mostly. And I think that's the Pulse X and Pulse Pair. And since the Hex Pulse Chain community is pretty smart, they understand that. And that's why this one is paying the lowest. It's because the most people are participating in it. $54 million is in this pool. Um, and because it has more money in it, it's paying less than some of the other ones, right? It's also and at least one, incentivized to, if you, if you can you click really? the, um, the calculator and then, oh, the calculator for the APR, right beside the percentage. Oh, there we go. Okay. And then click details at the bottom. Details. Toby one mentioned the other day. That was interesting. Yeah, you can see the multiplier there. Uh, that the one's hundred x. Yeah, looks like. And then the other ones you can see are much much higher too. So I think it's yeah, you're right. Basically, a combination of that and the and, and the uh, incentivization multiplier. Yeah. You bet. But definitely, when more people come into these pools, the the amount that it pays out goes down proportionately. Correct. Right. And yeah. that's how most farms work, more or less, including the Fox Exchange, including two Fox via the Fox Exchange is that there's going to be that difference. So if we look at the one that's paying the most, which today we have a very close tie between USDT and DAI to Pulse. Um, like, okay, so we have USDT is winning the second, uh, oh no, sorry, USDC, 83% uh, and change, right? So $14 million in that pool. Thanks for that tip, Max. I hadn't uh, looked at that previously. It's very easy to miss. I know I missed it for a while too. <laughs> Okay, so we have 150x farm multiplier. So yeah, they're incentivizing you to participate in this one a little bit. And they kind of have to because this is going to be the, one of the worst in permanent loss pools. Because we know that USDC is not going to go much above a dollar, but Pulse could go up many multiples of what it is right now. Um, or this one's USDC to Ethereum. Okay, my bad. Uh, USDC no, from no, Ethereum yeah. to Pulse. Yeah. There we go. Sorry. Yeah, USDC. Hard to, Pulse. to read sometimes, yeah. It is. Um, so we know that USDC is going to be a dollar all day long and that pulse could go up and down by 50% and, or by multiples. Like if pulse goes up 10 X, well, USDC is not going to go up 10 X and you're going to lose a large portion of your gains, uh, to it being converted into USDC. You'll end up with less pulse in your wallet and more USDC. You'll still make more money than if pulse didn't go up 10 X, but it'll be greatly reduced compared to something like this pulse. Paul sex pool where likely there, you know, maybe one goes up 10 X and one goes up eight X in the same timeline, but like they're, they're not going to totally leave each other behind, which is hundred percent a guarantee with the stable coin situation. Right. So, and then when we get, you know, like moderately um, less risk on something like this he hex pulse, they're maybe not going to be as close paired. And then these ink ones are a bit of a wild card. And let's look at your um, let's look at the uh, multiplier in these ink ones and see what uh, what the deal is? Okay, so we have a 200x multiplier on the ink, so they're they're really incentivizing you. But we all like we all know that ink was a lot lower than it was right now, and its main utility is this billionaire guy buys it sometimes. 
So I think it could go down is also possible, or it could go way up and leave you behind on the other side. So these ones are also a little riskier, though they are paying, you know, quite a bit more, like like three times more than the Pulse X Pulse pair. So, you know, there's there's value here. Um, but it's uh, it's changing all the time. And easy, even as we're looking at it, these numbers just change. Like they're not exactly the same. We just gained a percentage on ink down here. Um, and they're going to go up and down continuously throughout the day. But uh, definitely impermanent loss is the thing that I think people should understand and consider that when they're doing these. But when you think about impermanent loss, and this is one thing that most impermanent loss calculators don't do. And I, I've been able to find some that do. Um, you have to consider that if you're getting some sort of token uh, on top, like a, a yield token, a bonus token, like the ink token or the fox token or the two fox token, you have to weigh the value of that against the impermanent loss. So if like if you were down 10% from you what you would have been if you had just held both tokens separately, but you received 50% in value from the incentive token in this particular scenario by participating, then you're actually up 40% effectively, right? So it's, um, you know, it's something, it's a, it's a big picture thing and it's a long-term thing. You don't go in these for a day or even a week. Like you should commit to, in my experience, um, and this isn't financial advice, this is just what, what I've found is that, you know, you're three months in a yield farm. Uh, unless you have a very specific plan or, you know, or you're doing some sort of yield farm sniping thing, which is a talk for another day. Um, you know, three months is, is a good timeline. Minimum. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We hit on uh Fox and uh, the, the show. yeah, I'm curious about the hocus pocus thing, but yeah, we got yeah, you bet. We'll, we'll hit ten, that 10 up. minutes left. Can you, yeah. can we pack it in 10 minutes? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. So I'm going to stop sharing that one. And I love to see the overview of different options and stuff too, because um, yeah, yeah, yeah very cool. let's do it. Now I'm just going to hit on a couple fox pools here because it's uh, we could go pretty deep. So let's find first. We're going to look at uh, stable pools. Okay, so it's pools with just stable tokens, which are which are done differently on the Fox Exchange than the pools that aren't just stable tokens, and and there's a, there's a reason for that. It's so that the fees are very low to trade from one to another, and there's a, a good incentive to do that. So if we look at these and we look at the yield right now, right, we can see that the top paying one is this Costa USDC pool. Now, but right now, because Costa is in between uh, front end providers, there's no way to redeem Coast. Uh, you know, for a dollar. So it's a little off its peg. So I'm not going to recommend that one today, but other days, this is a good pool too. So we're going to look at this bridge stable pool, which is great. These are just the bridged options from Ethereum. This is the safest option on the pulse chain. You can make up to 18%. If you did it through the two fucks front end, it would likely be that 18% um, on just stables, just pairing up USDT, USDC and DAI from Ethereum, not the copied uh, not the copied versions. So safe, easy option that the Fox exchange provides. Um, there's zero impermanent loss with this option most days. So that's the kind of thing you could move in and out of, even if you had to be there for a week, why would you not want to make that for a week on $10,000? I would, we're going to take a look at the voting page. Cause that's going to help me find what I'm looking for. I want to take a look at some of these Maximus Dow pools, right? There's a couple of note. So these are the Maximus DAO tokens on the Pulse chain, right? Paired with uh, with a hex from the Pulse chain. So we have hex from the Pulse chain, all the different maxi tokens ranging in this case from a one year hex stake to a 15 year hex stake is what these tokens represent. And through the two Fox front end, you get around that 38%, which is about what hex promises, I think, except for your 100% liquid, right? And these tokens, sometimes appreciate faster than hex because the they are these long stakes attached to them uh you know in 15 years from now i would love to have a bag of maxi tokens uh it's going to be worth a lot more per unit uh than a hex token on the day so you know that to me this is just hex paired with 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 hex and you can have up to eight tokens this one is six Minimal and permanent loss. Of course, there's going to be some difference. Sometimes there's a premium being paid for one of these in some way, but they're going to move up and down at a very similar rate over a very short period of time of like a week or a month. So this is another pool that maybe you can move in and out of in a shorter period of time and get some gain without having huge and permanent loss. So big win there. Another one, um, probably my favorite one right now, and I haven't looked at it since the vote 
went through, but I feel like it's going to be good. Okay, so this is Maximus tokens, 15 year stake on on uh, Pulse Chain, paired with the team token. Okay, good. It's still awesome. 130 percent APR if you stake this through the two fox front end. On you know, I know the team token is a little more complicated. It's adding up some different things, but basically hex paired with hex again with 130 percent APR and you're a hundred percent liquid. So like this beats hex staking right now. It might not every day all the time, but you are participating in hex staking because of the nature of the maxi tokens. Uh, it, it really just, you, you know, you are still participating in the hex staking ecosystem. You're not going against, you know, the, the ethos of Richard Hart. Uh, we're still, you know, playing all the games. We're just doing it in a really smart way where we can take this yield every minute of every day we can be making this and, you know, do something else with that and not have to sell our main bag, which is basically hex in this case. So fantastic. And because we're the pulse chain and we can bridge things from Ethereum to the pulse chain, the Maximus tokens are perfect for that. So you have like a whole suite of the Maximus tokens from Ethereum where we, you know, I, I know there's some uh, conflict over this, but I feel like the Maximus guys, as well as the uh, Magic Carpet Ride guys kind of solved the Ethereum cost staking problem in various ways. Um, and this is a great one. Like these are Maximus tokens from Ethereum, bridge the pulse chain. Okay, so we got paying up to 37%. So we're right around that hex staking number. But you have here one, two, three, four, five tokens, including hex from Ethereum uh, with three years, seven years, 10 years, and 15 year hex stakes, all tokenized, all liquid, uh, 24 hours of every day. Uh, and paying you to do the same thing that you're supposed to do on the pulse chain with cheap fees instead of on Ethereum, even though they're from Ethereum. So yeah, big win. E, e hex, e derivatives for whales exactly. or st st staked uh, pulled versions of it. Like why not? It still works. Yep. So these are, you know, these are these are solid choices. Um, they're not the only choices. Like there are some pools on there that have uh, that have ink that have. Uh, Pulse X, there's many pools uh, that have uh, Pulse as part of the pool, right? And we can have up to eight tokens in a pool. So that's, you know, a pretty serious, um, that pretty pretty serious number of options that you have there. Now, some of those are paying less and some of them are paying more, but those ones we just looked at, guys, like, can you see what I mean about like, there's going to be so little uh, impermanent loss there that it's going to be, you know, infinitesimal uh, compared to what you'd experience on pairing uh, like pulse with USDT, for example. Yeah, yeah. Especially with the with the with the two fox um, added on top as well to get those higher APRs, it's it's kind of a bit of a no brainer, right? So yeah, you bet. And um, I won't go into the exact details, but basically, like the boost that you see here is the boost like between the sixteen percent and thirty seven percent. That's the boost that you would get if you had a bunch of fox tokens locked for a year yourself, and you can come to the two fox front end and basically get the same thing without having to lock fox tokens for a year. So there's yeah. more there's more details. It's it's a nuanced thing. There's there's a lot of variables, and you're getting the two fox token or the prime two fox token as additional yield. But that's basically it. Like. Why would you not take 37% instead of 16% if you could? Uh, this was, it's there. I just want to say there, like, do you, are you, it's basically one way of looking at two fucks of saying, okay, this APR at 16% is what you would use. You you would probably get as an individual and the, the upper end of 37% is what you would get using two fucks. Is that what you would expect to happen? It, it's going to be variable and we can't guarantee an exact uh, that it's always going to be 2.5 X. I say that's the maximum because that is the maximum that is, that is possible. Though the truth is you, if, uh, if the other tokens you're getting like the two Fox token, which will likely naturally be worth more than the Fox token. If it goes up in value, your, your gain could be even greater. Um, but, uh, generally speaking, people are going to get a lot more than they'd be able to get by themselves unless they're a super fox whale who has a very large amount of fox staked. And there's, there's games you can play where like, oh, you have a hundred bucks worth of fox staked and then you put $10 only in an LP pool. Like, yeah, if you're, if you want to do that with 10 bucks, go to town. But if you're, if you, if you're a serious, you know, um, liquidity farmer, then that's not what you want to do. And, uh, two fucks is going to provide a foot front end mm -hmm. where you can get that boost and you can get these additional tokens without having to jump through weird hoops or be pressing a thousand buttons and then combined with Tetra. And it's a very natural mix to, you know, work these things with Tetra. You'll be able to save a lot of button pressing and that auto compounding for small amounts. It's just going to be huge. We got 60 seconds. What do you guys want to spend it on? I can show you this other screen if you like. Let's do it. 
50 seconds. Keep it track this time. No, this is really good. I, I wish I had more time today. I just have an appointment, but man, this is thank yeah, you for taking I us through this, this, uh, all this stuff. I, I really like it. Okay. So guys caution with this, this is the hocus pocus, um, farms, uh, farming wizard. It just shows you everything that's on pulse chain that has this type of contract. You can see there's, there's all kinds of things on here. You can, uh, search for certain things. Like you could search for just show me nine inch pools and so on and so forth. Uh, and we, we can see here like the, the Nope token, the solid X tokens, they're, they're all here. It's things with P die, all these different farms. It shows you the APR. Also, yeah. Lots of stuff. Really good. Yeah. So I think this is a resource. It's a resource that you have to be cautious with right now. Um, but for, for me, this is something I like to glance at to be like, hey, what's going on? What are the deals? And some of these deals I would not take. And I can sort this by APR, right? And we can look at, okay, what's the best deal? Okay, which happens to be at the bottom. Okay, well, I can get you know, 3000% on the I bond and farm token LP. Well, if you've never heard of those, don't press the deposit button, right? <laughs> yeah. That may not be a good choice because, you know, these may be unverified contracts. Or there's, there's different nuances that if you don't understand it, don't do it. If you do understand it, right? Like if you're a pro and you want to do this in a sequestered wallet and you want to put 10 bucks in that pool and see how quick you get your 10 bucks back, then do it. Right. But yeah, for, yeah, you know, careful. for yeah, for us, for, for us three here, like, yeah, we could play that game, but anybody can get caught, right? So, you know, we have to be cautious. But like, oh, look here, there's a dick with butt to probably P die pool, um, you know, like, or no, that's real die. Like, there's some interesting options that won't be present on the Fox Exchange for one. Just hearing that, just hearing that sentence is just cracks me up. <laughs> there's a, let me squint my eyes. Oh, that's the, that's the okay, that one, yeah. It's but fine. some of these are solid. Like this is nine inch. This is nine inch paired with BBC, right? Like we can look like this is spark swap. Here's another one that I've, I'm, I should have mentioned them before. I also believe they are a solid option for, for this sort of thing, right? Though that you'd have to look at the individual pool. So spark spot swap uh, paired with the uh, goat token from the D gen community. I believe those are both solid communities like, and it's via spark swap. And this just gives you a front end. And you could do the same three thing through the spark swap front end, or you could do it right here and you can actually manage. You could have, 50 of these farms running on this page and there's a claim all button where you could claim all the yield from every single farm. So I think we even have, yeah, Pulse X on here. Yeah. So we can even uh, do it with, uh, yeah, we can do it with nine inch. We can do it with Pulse X. We, ha we have some really solid options here as well as some kind of sketchy options in my opinion. But, you know, maybe some of these sketchy options won't be sketchy. Maybe the, maybe the uh, Trofa farm that I'm not familiar with, maybe they'll end up being a really big part of the community. And that'll be, you know, an awesome thing that you found them here. So it's a great learning tool and it, it is a great utility thing as well, uh, in my opinion. Awesome. And that's from Hocus Pocus. So, yeah, Hocus Pocus. Yeah. I put the link uh, in the chat. Dot well. finance. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Links links in the chat. Yeah, be careful. If you if you are playing with new, you know, stuff you haven't heard of before, you know, you can always use a burner wallet, do all that stuff, see how it goes and, and all that too. But yeah, be careful out there with the farms. A lot of interesting opportunities, also a lot of coins that do well, don't do well. You know, the market how how is how it is right now, regardless of if they have good intentions or or otherwise right now too. But uh yeah, a lot of cool options on Pulse Chain. Thank you for the for the overview, uh fast and and Stu, I'm glad you came by and uh, we talked about Tetra stuff too. Like, uh, yeah. yeah, very cool. Yeah, good to let be let me see the Darth, the Darth strategy. That, that was fun too. Very fun. May, may, may the force be with you. Yes. <laughs> Indeed. May, may it be with us all. Uh, Fast Abdul, uh, Fast Abdul on Twitter, Stu, Stu Man, Stu Man 5555. And yes. uh, at Tetra, at Tetra Win. I mean, yeah, I got the stuff in the uh, in description as well for the guests. But uh, yeah. All right, everyone. That's all we got for you today. Sci-Vibe and 5555. Five, five, five. We are out.